Meet Mel and Miles. After 10 years of being up in the air, they're throwing caution to the wind, taking the leap and tying the knot. <laughs> they want a wedding with a difference. Their guests have no idea what they're planning. They don't know they're going to be getting dressed up, so it's all a big surprise for them. But how much comedy and chaos do you want in a wedding? Please slowly, together, open the uh, bag to reveal the rings. <laughs> If nobody plays along, it is just going to be a train wreck. Plus, take one pop star princess who wants the perfect wedding. I've been dreaming about this since I was a child. <laughs> add a dash of DIY. So my cake stand is just made out of a cheese board, a couple of plates and a whole bunch of shot glasses. And a crash course in dancing. I just want to get through it without injuring anybody. Throw in a mystery guest. <laughs> but will it all be ruined by the weather on the big day? Meet 31-year-old recruitment manager Mel and her vampire-to-be 30-year-old IT specialist Miles. We're odd, very strange couple. <laughs> we, we enjoy spending lots of time together and we're quite happy to be each other's best friend and do things together. Like most youngsters, they love playing dress-ups with their mates. Mel and Miles started out in event management in New Zealand but they now live in Perth. Easy, Tiger. Miles used to be my boss. So we used to work together, go out together, party together. After some time, I decided finally to ask Miles out, and he turned me down flat. So we went to a party that night, and uh, I got him drunk. And we've been drunk ever since. <laughs> that was nearly ten years ago. Then Miles had an idea. I thought about a week beforehand I might propose to Mel and I decide to cut out huge two metre square letters saying marry me Mel. Once she spotted the question, she literally fell for it. I didn't see much of my skydive because I was crying all the way down after I saw the sign. See what I mean? He's the most romantic man in the universe. So how do you top a proposal like that? with a bizarre engagement party to make it a hat-trick, a most unusual wedding. People take weddings far too seriously for them to be a good day. We want it to be fun. It's a celebration of our love. So we wanted to celebrate our love and we wanted to do it our way. Life's about having fun. Yeah, life's too short. Take things too seriously. The theme, you guessed it, comedy. People are going to find out what they're doing on the day on the bus. Has something to do on the way down. The bridal party will be allocated on the bus. They'll be given their costumes on the bus. We may not have any friends left after I've seen all of this. The whole stand-up routine will cost them 12 grand. The venue, beautiful Afitu Park. What's really funny is there's only eight days to pull it off. And already there's a hitch. So I get the job of getting all the bags on my own today because we got as far as Perth Airport and Miles's passport had expired by a year. So I had a solo flight this trip, so I've spent a good chunk of the trip crying. Most brides worry about them actually showing up on the altar. I'm hoping he shows up in the country, so... Having arrived at the crack of sunrise to make the most of the day, Mel's left stranded with only Miles's brother Craig for company. <laughs> a year ago, not, not even just a couple of months, so it was a year ago, so we're just lucky he's got a British passport, if it was my passport that had expired we would have been stuffed. I'm starting to think maybe he did this on purpose because he knew how big today was and how much stuff I had planned. Maybe not, back in the big country things aren't looking good for Miles, he has to get to Sydney to sort out his passport. The person in front of me got onto the flight and I didn't. That leaves all the organising to Mel, and two hours later she sees her wedding dress for the first time. That is gorgeous! And maybe it will even go with the headgear. This is the crown that was made for me by two dear friends in Perth, Chris and Andy. 
and it's based on Arwen's butterfly crown from Lord of the Rings. Mel scored her dress for free in exchange for some work Miles is going to do for a website. It's a real bonus. Pushing that way. Oh, we're not fitting this way. But just when things are coming together nicely, there's another hassle for Mel. Miles is just found out that his British passport has expired as well as his New Zealand passport. Nobody's laughing. This is a disaster. I have just been denied getting a flight with Qantas by like one passenger in front of me. So I can't get there before five o'clock. If Miles can't fly to Sydney and get an emergency passport, the fun wedding will be a fiasco. Otherwise I'd have to wait three to five, well, three working days to get it and I'd arrive in New Zealand the day before I get married, so that's not really not on the cards. At the moment now his brother, his father and Miles all trying to find the best options to get him over here ASAP. Hopefully, fingers crossed, if we can get somewhere. Just means we're forking out another small fortune. Desperate times call for desperate measures. If you can just go and sleep with someone at the British Embassy, that'd be really helpful. <laughs> Coming up, Mel cracks under the pressure. Oh, I'm really upset. I'm here on my own doing this. <laughs> and so does Joe. I'm not sad crying. I'm no, not sad crying. Of course not. There's less than eight days till the comedy wedding, and the butt of the joke is still in Australia. Wife-to-be Mel has to organise everything herself, including the marriage licence. Just writing in all these details and just thinking about Miles. And I'm just really upset that I'm here on my own doing this. And it's only, it's been less than a day. <laughs> that doesn't say we're already happily married, I don't know what does. I've got tears all over the form now. Back in Perth, Miles has had a breakthrough. I have my ticket and boarding pass, yay! And I'm going to go through customs and board the plane when I can. I still have to get my passport sorted out, but that way there. The seamstress has flown through the dress alteration, so Mel's back for her final fitting. And there's even more good news. Miles is doing air miles. The latest with Mr Miles is he's currently on a plane to Sydney as we speak. He's then going to be grilled by the New Zealand immigration. I think he still has to pay a small fortune and have a two hour meeting with them to try and encourage them to allow him in the country. Um, and then hopefully he should be here at 2.30 tomorrow if all that goes well. <laughs> I'm doing that a lot today. <laughs> Crossing her fingers must have done the trick. A day later, she's back at the airport. Miles has achieved a migration miracle. That's neat, but now time is the enemy. <laughs> Hello. But first, a round of applause. Here's the celebrity celebrant. Oh, no tongues, I'm watching. <laughs> we really wanted a male comedian. We found out that Ewan was a celebrant. Done deal. He's, you know, was Brilliant. one of our favourite yeah. New Zealand comedians, so it was an easy choice for us to make. <laughs> We've got the bridesmaid and a breast man. So oh, the breast man's be. wearing a t-shirt with breasts on it. He's supposed to be making sure that Miles doesn't look at too many breasts on the day. If it's going along funny, 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 and then all of a sudden there's a little serious part there. I'll jump in and you, do my stand-up, shall you'll I? Just know that, <laughs> you'll just know that you and run out of funny things to say at that particular point. Beer time. So we, we, Assistance, where's that beer? Yeah, yeah. So that's when I'll call on the joke tellers <laughs> and stuff. Right, where's that joke? I need it now. Yeah, that What's works. That? Ewan's an old hand at this, and he has some advice. They want to be a bit careful, they don't offend anybody as well, and, um, and you guys especially, because it's your day. You've made it such a fun thing that I think that, you know, whatever happens on the day will just be part of it, you know, whether it... Madness, whatever it is, whatever, chaos. Whatever madness and chaos happens, everybody will think, wow, they've written that into it as well. The hilarity is just getting started. Mel and Miles visit a costume shop to rent some wacky outfits for their guests. Miles dives straight into the lingerie drawer. He's found just the right penny for the bridesmaid. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard that there first. Miles likes this frilly apron over <laughs> that frilly apron. <laughs> 
Mel and Miles aren't just searching for crazy one-off costumes, Lord of the Rings is high on the agenda. Hopefully the guests will go with the Frodo flow. That's definitely Frodo. But our comedy couple are a bit more serious when it comes to money. They forked out a lot for the fancy dress, but they've offset that by having Miles' suit made overseas. Sort of. The problem is we had the suit made in the Philippines and we had my wedding dress made in Christchurch and they don't match. So it's all hands on deck to find the tie that will marry the outfits, so to speak. It's very posh. The, the tie doesn't, is, isn't exactly the same as the material, but it matches. Mm. The, it'll bring it out, yeah. Hey, we might look like a couple on our wedding day. That'd be exciting. But Miles may not be able to walk like a man up the aisle. His suit is too snug around the nuptials. It's too tight around here. So what we might do is I'll let it out. Just about an inch and a half, I'd say. Still, even with the alterations, it's cheaper than an original. It's, you know, a third at least of the price that you would pay on a Versace suit. Still got the look, still looks really good. The hardest thing has been getting the sizes exactly right. But even with a cheap suit and the occasional bargain, money is still tighter than Miles' pants after his passport problems. Still a little bit stressed, a little bit more relaxed. If they do let out the room, it's still going to be a little bit tight, but at least you'll be able to walk easily and probably sit down. Miles is feeling looser now, but their celebrant, Ewan, certainly isn't, after casting his professional eye over the wedding plan. We've got Frodo. We've got Sam, we've got the bride's maid, as in maid, breast man, witnesses, kitchen hands. So many people that have to sort of fit into this thing and it's a surprise to everybody. Me being there is a surprise. And my biggest, biggest fear for them is that all of these people don't play along. And if nobody plays along, it is just going to be a train wreck, an absolute train wreck. One celebrity who knows the ups and downs of showbiz is 30-year-old Jo Cotton. She plans to marry 32-year-old bar manager Dan. Not only is she hot, but she's also can have reasonably in-depth conversations with her. Jo's world famous in New Zealand for being a wild child and part-time shock jock. You will poke a lot of chicks. What is it, poke a lot of chicks? And solstress. Now she's found true bliss. We met in a lovely bar and the only seat available was next to a handsome young man that looks a little bit like Chandler of Friends. After a run of disappointing singles... I went out with a lot of dicks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, as a girl, you kind of grow up with the idea of fairy tale romances. It wasn't quite the fairy tale proposal. I was asking him to take out the rubbish, and I was like pulling out the bag, and I was like, Dan, Dan, can you pull out, can you take the rubbish out? And um, he comes out and he said, Joe, Seeing as your dad's here, and I gave him this look because I thought he was going to say, can I take it out another time? So I was like, don't you dare. And he goes, flick, will you marry me? And I was like, what? Still, these two lovebirds are planning a wedding to remember. It looks like a mega, massive it does. ring, doesn't it? They're not scared to spend up large. I'd say about 50 grand is the budget. I hear a slight gasp. But it won't pay for everything. Um, my cake stand is just made out of a cheese board, a couple of plates and a whole bunch of shot glasses. So <laughs> Joe's on a cake. DIY sure mission. The Half the cake is stuck to the <laughs> pan. I don't know if we've got enough icing for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> DIY is a great Kiwi institution. It might be time to call the professionals. <laughs> And they've given themselves a challenge, a feature dance on the night. I just want to get through it without injuring anybody. I'm not even worried about being sexy, I just... Well, oh, yeah, that's it. ...don't want to <laughs> put your eye out by an absent-minded hand or something. There's always a mother lurking. This time it's Jo's. She's going to be the celebrant. Okay. Time! <laughs> How long have we been putting this moment off? A while. A while. I need you to remember that with every other couple, you let them decide and you have no personal feelings towards what they choose realistically because they're not your, you know, your children. I know that you have an invested interest in this particular wedding, but you have to stay a little bit neutral. I will. Okay? Great on one hand, because we do know each other and I feel comfortable with her, but on the other hand, she is Joe's mum, so I guess that raises a little bit of nerves in me. Does that? Yeah, it does a little bit. Not sure why. But the whole wedding hinges on fine weather. So what happens if it rains? It's going to stop raining. 
because I said so. Coming up, when marriage meets comedy. <laughs> Has the wacky wedding gone too far? Can you please slowly together open the uh, bag to reveal the rings. <laughs> well, it hasn't been a walk in the park. After not knowing whether the groom would even be able to attend his own wedding, the budget blowout and sorting the fancy costumes, Mel and Miles can finally relax. We're really calm. We're a bit too calm, I think. A bit worried about how calm we are. And don't they look a treat? Mel got her Lord of the Rings crown complete with wig. As for Miles, let's hope with the tight trousers, there's no bending over. Start playing up, Mel. Work it, Mel. They might be calm, but what about their guests? Trapped in a bus, they have no idea that smart casual won't be a feature of today's wardrobe. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard the Miles and Mel flight to fantasy. Laura Roberts. Hi. The Mel and Miles. Let's see what mischief they have planned for us. This is for the bride's maid. Oh, no! <laughs> Uh, have a secret task for later on. <laughs> so far, so good. It's um, all a big surprise, so we don't know what's happening. We've not been included in any of the um, planning, so everything is just new to us. I taught Mel to always do the unusual, but do it well. She's certainly coming through now. <laughs> Meet Mel's mum. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And could this passenger be the mystery breast man? Alright, watch the head. Oh, watch the head. Even the limo's unusual. Mel's not really getting into it. Okay, you're only going to have to get in and out of the car another eight times. <laughs> Uh-oh, not what they wanted to see. Our bus has just driven past us, which means no. very early. Which means um, <laughs> we're late. What the hell? It's an unorthodox wedding. Anything goes. How's my ass actually, Miles? Can you check my ass out? Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. It's just you're spending a lot of time there, buddy. There's not much they can do about the early bus. Mel and Miles will be along in a minute. Uh, Miles, that's my bum. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it again, hasn't he? That's... <laughs> Thanks. Finally, it's time for our comedy duo to get this show on the road. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that is perfectly us, subtle. <laughs> Just as instructed, the groupies arrive on cue. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's the moment of truth. Will the comedy wedding be a hit or go down like a lead balloon? Roll up, roll up. Come one, come all. Come to see the most spectacular, fantastic and unbelievable show on earth. Now, in front of your very own eyes, we will attempt for the very first time ever to join Mel and Miles in marriage. Yeah. 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 Bloody time. <laughs> uh, would the writer of the bride's vow please uh, make themselves known? Thank you, assistant number one. Mel, would you please repeat after me? While we are here surrounded by those who love us. While we are here surrounded by those who love us. We make this pledge to ourselves we make this pledge to ourselves. And those who mean most to us. And those who mean most to us. I will hug you. I will hug you. Even if my arms don't fit anymore. Even if my <laughs> arms don't fit anymore. I will kiss you. I will kiss you. Even with morning breath. Even with morning breath. I will say I love you. I will say I love you. Even when sometimes we forget why. Even though sometimes we forget why. Tissue. 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 Trusting other people to write their vows for them is right up there with the craziest things these two have ever done. Hey, this is going to be great. I am yours to spank and scold. <laughs> I am yours to spank and scold. <laughs> Dominate and mould. Dominate and mould. And to save our friends from your complaints. <laughs> and to save our friends from your complaints. I promise to play. I promise to play. Monkey hide the banana. <laughs> Monkey hide the banana. Whenever you like. Whenever you like. <laughs> I would now ask if Frodo and Sam could make it their quest and deliver the rings here to where their true love powers belong. Frodo and Sam, where are you? 
Where's the rings? The ring bearers have forgotten the precious. You better go get it quickly. There's always one, brother. Today it's you. I ask you both to kneel here. Frodo and Sam, are they in there? Yeah. Okay, and now could you please slowly together open the uh, bag to reveal the rings. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> rings, uh, have neither, <laughs> rings have neither a beginning nor end. They are infinite and therefore symbolise a love that will endure. Mel, could you please take the ring to place on Miles' finger? And now, Miles, could you please take the ring to place on Mal's finger? There's no place I'd rather be than by your side. You're my strengths, my counsel, my heart, my soul. You're my friend, and you're my night and day. So now, by the power vested in me as a marriage celebrant appointed under New Zealand law, and so long as I get my fee, I am delighted at last to pronounce you married. You may now, well, you know, go on, get in there. Come on, have a pash. <laughs> a quick autograph, and it's official. A great couple, they're obviously going to have a fun filled life together if everybody can go this crazy at their wedding. It's uh, my first ever crazy wedding. It was just a way of celebrating our love with our friends and family. Yeah. Excuse for a party. Yeah, really, that's what it was. <laughs> Next week, will it be true bliss for Joe Cotton and husband to be Dan? Can't wait to see you, I haven't seen the dress yet. I'm sure she'll be absolutely beautiful. Or will the weather wash their wedding away? I'm not sad crying. I'm no, excited. Of course not. Of course not. Wow. You're in the good way. Oh, look, no, awesome. the vein's yeah. going. <laughs> and Verity and Derek. She's planning a I grand just... entrance. Okay. I'm planning on hang gliding to the altar. But could this wedding crash on the runway? We've not lived together and it's really quite a big decision.